Join the Adventure Club on Patreon and support Saturday Adventures. Hi, I'm Anna, and on this week's Saturday Adventure, I'm in paradise. This is the island of Panglao in the Bohol province of the Philippines. Bohol is comprised of several islands in a nation made up of thousands of islands. I started my day at sunrise to catch the first rays coming up over the bluest waters I've ever seen. The tide was way out, and as the light grew brighter, I saw I was not alone. I'm putting on the starfish. Right here. Trapped in the tide pools, I found dozens of starfish, sea urchins, sea snails, sea cucumbers, and even a nudibranch. Look at this guy. It's like he's got tiny mountains all over him. I relocated as many as possible to the deeper waters. He's kind of hard. I mean, all these little points are really quite soft. My producer asked, why does it matter? You can't possibly save them all. Yeah, he's looking to see what's going on. As I placed a little blue starfish back into the waves, I said, it mattered to him, didn't it? And I'm going to put him back now. We're gonna be kind to animals. I was not here for leisure though. I came to explore. I took a boat to Bohol Island, the heart of the province, and the 10th largest island in the Philippines. Somewhere in the jungle was the only carnivorous primate in the entire world, and I had come here to see it. I'm a vegetarian, but I'm a primate, and I'm almost certain that you are too. Our close relatives include gorillas and chimps and monkeys and lemurs and a lot of animals that look more like squirrels than any of you or me or Coco the gorilla. Some of these primates are vegetarian like me, but most are willing to eat any kind of protein. The only primate that exclusively eats meat lives right here in Bohol. I needed to take in the lay of the land, so I looked for the most elevated position I could find. Hey, I'm Anna, and on this week's Saturday adventure, we're going to the top of these stairs to check out the chocolate hills. Let's go. These are the Chocolate Hills, a bizarre geological structure covering a 50 kilometer area in the Carmen region. That's 20 miles for us Americans. 214 steps later, we've reached the observation deck at the top of the Chocolate Hills. No one has done an accurate count. But there are believed to be between 12 and 1800 candy-shaped mounds covered in grass that turn chocolate brown in the dry season. The view up top was spectacular, but the only primates I saw were wearing shoes and hats and carrying cameras. I knew every single one of them, myself especially, was at least a little bit vegetarian. I found my guide and asked him to take me to the carnivorous primates. Here is when things got cagey. The Philippine tarsier is a diminutive nocturnal creature that spends its days sleeping in the trees. Somewhere, way, way, way back in history, 
You and I share a grandfather with the Tarsier, though there is some debate to where Tarsiers fall in the primate family tree. Once distributed across the world, Tarsiers are now limited to Southeast Asia. Tarsiers are primarily insectivorous, but are willing to eat any animal that fits in their tiny mouths, from mouse to lizard. Despite being the only primate in the world more bloodthirsty than chimps and humans, Tarsiers are incredibly shy creatures that don't handle pressure well. Bright lights, loud noises, and physical contact can make a Tarsier become suicidal. Because they are incredibly cute, and they will most often stay in the same place all day long, unscrupulous animal parks have opened in the country to draw in tourists with close-up photo opportunities. That is where my guide took me. He dropped me off at the front gate and pointed to where I would meet him at the end. I didn't see the Tarsiers here. I couldn't get far enough into the park. The rude zoo attendants mocked me when I didn't want to go look at the skinny, malnourished animals, the monkeys that had to live in total isolation to keep them from fighting, or the alligator gar that barely had room to turn around in the small concrete pool it lived in. I found my guide in the snack area drinking coffee. He was surprised I was done so soon, but I was on the edge of tears. When I told him what was wrong, he had the solution. He took me through the man-made forest. Across the river. And into the deep jungle. This is the Tarsier Research and Development Center, founded by Carlito Pizarras, the Tarsier Man. The center was built as a research and conservation area in the jungle where visitors can experience these delicate animals in a natural environment under minimal stress. Instead of waiting in the car like all the other places we visited, my guide came inside the welcome center with me, guiding me to the ticket counter, pointing out exhibits along the way. It was clear he was just as upset about the last park as I was. Only small groups of visitors are allowed inside the Tarsier enclosure, and they must be accompanied by a staff member at all times. Park attendants locate the Tarsiers in the morning before the park opens so guests can be led to the animals without getting too close. In parks like the previous zoo, Tarsiers are caged at night and placed on perches as they are too scared to leave each morning. The TRDC is surrounded by a high wall that keeps out any predators interested in dining on a tarsier. The nimble tarsiers are not obstructed by the wall, allowing these incredibly territorial animals to come and go as they please. The enclosure is made appealing to the tarsiers with chumming. Heavy floodlights are set up around the building to attract insects. The insects attract the tarsiers, who are provided with a safe haven from predators to spend the night feasting. It is now time for the tarsiers to sleep, and I heard a beach calling my name. Thanks for joining me on this adventure!